This lesson will introduce us to the idea of using angle measure in order to determine whether or not two lines are parallel. We're going to use our special angle relationships in order to determine whether or not lines are parallel. For instance, we know that when alternate interior angles are congruent, the result is that lines are parallel. When alternate exterior angles are congruent, the result is that lines are parallel. When corresponding angles are congruent, the result is that lines are parallel. And lastly, when same side interior angles are supplementary, the lines are parallel. So what this is telling me is that we are always going to look for those special angle pairs and then use those special angle pairs to determine whether or not lines are parallel. So I'm going to take a minute and write that down, and you should too. Use special angle pairs to determine, and I could say whether or not lines are parallel. I'm going to shorten that and say parallelism. So in a nutshell, whenever we're trying to prove that two lines are parallel to each other, we're going to look for one of those four situations. All right, so that's the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty, the how and what we're going to try to accomplish. Let's go ahead and let's get this started. In example one, we're given that picture and we're reminded in the directions that we can't make any assumptions regarding angle measure just by the way something looks in the picture. We're allowed to only use the information provided to us to determine the lines, if any, that are parallel. So I'm going to look at the angle measures in this first example and I'm going to see if I can apply one of these four situations, one of those four criteria up at the top, and if it matches or falls in one of those four criteria, we know the lines are parallel. Other situations that you might look for that might be helpful is if you need to look for vertical angles and look for linear pairs. Those might be helpful as well. In the first situation, we've got this angle here, which is 143, this angle here, which is 37. And I can't help but notice, I just marked those two congruent, and I definitely don't want to do that. So let me go back and fix my picture. Notice that they're on the same side of the transversal. They're both below the transversal, but inside the parallel lines. So these two are same side interior angles. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if they're supplementary. So 143 plus 37, when I do that math either on my paper or in my calculator, I find that together those two angles sum up to 180 degrees, making them supplementary. Since I've got this last scenario going on here, I know my lines are parallel. So determine which lines are parallel. Line A is parallel to line B. And as far as the justification, when same side interior angles are supplementary, the result is that lines are parallel. In the next example, I've got an angle that's marked 120. And then the one that corresponds with that, if I look at this picture, is this fella upstairs that's made up of the 82 and the 40. And if I combine those guys together, the result I get is 122 degrees. So I've got this pair of corresponding angles where one measures 120, the other measures 122. Since the corresponding angles are not congruent, the lines are not parallel. So I'm going to say no parallel lines. And as far as justification for that, I'm going to say the corresponding angles are not congruent. All right, moving along to the next one. Oh, this is, gets a little bit more intriguing and a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to start by looking at lines N and O. And if I were to look at lines N and O 
along that green transversal, if these two lines were to be parallel, the same side interior angles would have to be supplementary. But in this case, when I add the 115 and the 70, I end up with 185. They're not supplementary, and therefore the purple lines cannot be parallel. So now I'm going to go test those other pair of lines in the picture. Let me go test lines L and M. And kind of the same idea, if those lines are going to be parallel, I've got to find one of those special angle pair relationships that exists. And I can look along either transversal. I chose to look along the red transversal, but I could have just as easily looked along the purple transversal. Either one of those two would be enough to get the job done. If I'm looking along the red transversal, I've got one angle that's 70, one angle that's 110. Together, they add up to be 180. And that's enough right there to tell me that the two blue lines must be parallel to each other. So line L must be parallel to line M, because when I've got same side interior angles that are supplementary, the result that I get is parallel lines. But again, I could have just as easily used those same side interior angles along the purple transversal. And then in this last example, this is again even more intriguing because you notice as, as we begin to work through these problems, the pictures are becoming more and more intricate and more and more complex. And one thing I notice immediately is that they've given me some of those angle measures that go along that line up at the top but not all of the angle measures that go along that line up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and use the fact that angles on a straight line must add to 180 to find this missing angle. So I'm just going to go 180, subtract 69, subtract 31, and I find that this missing angle in here is 80 degrees. And likewise, if I follow that line all the way down, I'm going to do the same thing for this missing angle in here, 180 subtract 68, subtract 32, tells me that this blue angle is also 80. And that's kind of neat, that's kind of interesting, because now I'm going to consider this my transversal. And if I look first at these green lines, I notice that along that red transversal, the angle formed by that red transversal and the green line, they're both 80 degrees, they're corresponding angles. So I've got this situation coming or going along where I've got those congruent corresponding, corresponding angles, that makes lines parallel. So the lines that are going to be parallel here are the green ones. Line J is parallel to line N, because again, when corresponding angles are congruent, lines are parallel. So that takes care of business for me for the green lines. I should go check the other ones in the picture as well. So I'm just going to go back through and relabel my picture. This angle here we said was 80. This angle here we said was 80. I want to go check the red lines now to see if the red lines are parallel. And I'm going to use that purple transversal so I'm going to go again, I'm going to look at those corresponding angles. So this angle formed between the purple transversal and the red line, and this angle here formed between the purple transversal and the red line. One is 69, the other is 68. That tells me that these lines, K and M, are not parallel to each other. As to the reason why not, their corresponding angles are not congruent. But again, notice how I use my angles on a straight line to find the missing angle pairs in that picture. That might be a strategy that you might find useful and helpful as you work through some of the more complicated problems that you'll see when you come to class and we begin to do the practice. The other thing that you might find helpful, so that was the linear pairs, you might find it helpful to remember also that vertical angles are always going to be congruent to each other. 
As always, if you have questions, please write them down in the margin so that you'll remember to ask when you come back to class. Thank you for the gift of your time and watching the video. Make sure you put down in your own words the key ideas and important takeaways that you'll need from this video, and then see if you can use what you've learned in order to solve the problems on the next page.